Drake this year is not playing. CIG decided to introduce a new concept shift that sits in between the Caterpillar and the Miss Call C and it's going to be the Drake Ironclad. So this is a vehicle that was teased um, a few weeks ago um, that we would be seeing it um, finally and it did not disappoint. To be quite honest, this is probably one of the best looking vehicles in the game especially coming from drake i usually don't like drake vehicles but this one is actually pretty impressive before we get into this video i'd like y'all to know that i'm doing a giveaway for your mariah pulse in order to participate all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of june all right let's continue all right so um what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through uh some of the aspects of this vehicle uh through this latest inside star citizen episode and we're going to talk about uh some of our thoughts on it, okay? So let's get straight into it. So in the Star Citizen universe, we have a lot of cargo ships, but they're sort of concentrated around the lower end of cargo hauling, sort of the low hundreds SU and below, and the very high end where there's multi thousands. There's a mix of cargo ships which have their cargo on the inside, ones on the outside, like the whole series. And we really wanted to bring something different where it sort of sits right in the middle. It's a nice progression step and facilitates both internal and external loading of cargo, which is where the Drake Ironclad comes in. The kind of next step up for, for Drake cargo ships, it kind of builds on what the Caterpillar brings, um, but in a, a much larger form. The Drake Ironclad is a six-person, multi-crew, armoured freighter. A large proportion of the ship is dedicated to man i have to admit the aesthetics of this this is the very first drake ship that really impressed me with the um, aesthetics of, of it hopefully these concept images do translate well into the pu and that it looks the way that they've designed it i really like the way the industrial slash military type of look of this vehicle it's it looks really sick to the cargo bay at the front of it which has both a front ramp for loading and unloading cargo and small vehicles on the ground, as well as a retractable roof for doing that in space. As with this, this makes it so invaluable, the fact that you have a cargo bay that's accessible from the, uh, the roof of it, as well as the sides, right? Big Caterpillar, you only have access to the sides, but this one, you can also uh, put cargo through the roof of it, which makes it like, the ideal uh, vehicle. Number one, um, it, it protects your cargo. And number two, you can use it in space as well as on ground. And it's uh, it's 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 perfect. It's perfect. EVA as well. Little tight entrances to cargo ships doesn't necessarily lend itself to when you're out in deep space and you're trying to quickly move some cargo from one person's ship into your ship. Really, you want as much kind of access to be able to do that as you possibly can. So by having this i'm really digging the design it has it has a military feel to it but still drake and i think that's what impresses me i, I really like the uh i really like the way they designed this i really like the way they designed this cig continues to make awesome looking ships kind of much larger opening on top of the ship it allows us to kind of bring cargo in much easier so its role being a sort of armoured freighter comes from two distinct ways. One, the cargo itself is more protected. It's within the cargo bay that has the armoured roof section that covers it. So unlike, say, a hull sea where the cargo's on the outside, you can load it from the outside but then protect it with the ironclad. It's also more heavily armoured than the Caspilla, so it kind of gives a little bit more security to your kind of precious cargo. The exterior, very classic Drake brutish styling, a whole lot of engines and a lot of framework and quite thin structural elements support the rest of the ship. Very bare bones styling. It doesn't have lots of nice padding. It's all there and exposed. And it's really just sort of rugged and to the point. So the ironclad is really three distinct areas. You have all the accommodation in the rear sort of third of the ship. The front two thirds is really just this cargo bay with the front entrance and the retractable roof. I like the fact that you can put vehicles in it too. The bay is so big. You can you can literally use this as a carrier. Because the fact that this Pisces can fit in so easily and still have space for cargo, right? You can fit multiple, 
you know this could literally be a, a carrier you could probably bring a couple fighters in here as well if you really wanted to so this is a, a really solid multi-purpose ship actually and then you have the command module which has seats for the crew plus a few little jump seats for everyone else command module is there to steer the ship when it's attached and the command module serves as the escape pod as well. The only time you really want to detach it is in an emergency. It's not designed to be your sort of primary ship flying around. It kind of gives you a little bit of a get out of jail free card. If you're transporting stuff that is quite valuable, quite sought after in maybe some of our less desirable systems, what it allows you to do is kind of have a little bit of security. So if you're getting attacked or you're, you know, you're getting yourself into trouble, if you want to save yourself, you can kind of jettison your cargo and try and get out of dodge and kind of get out of safety. And I think that's like a really important thing as we get closer to Death of a Spaceman. With some of the recent tech that's come online, this brought us one step closer to implementing command modules properly. So not only will you see this uh, detachable command module feature on the Ironclad, but as well it will happen on the Caterpillar. Interior-wise, you've kind of got two entrances onto the ship. Um, you, you can either enter via the command module, and that takes you straight into a kind of corridor section. It's kind of like almost like a mezzanine. Um, you can either go up to the habitation area, which uh, is top floor of the ship, gives you like super nice views out both the, the kind of cargo out the front and the, the rear of the ship, or you can kind of come down the ship into the main uh, habitation area. Alternatively, you can enter through the dock and collar airlock, which is on the opposite side of the ship. At the rear of the interior of the ship, we've kind of got the, the heart of the engines. It's the big kind of engineering area where we've got all of the kind of main functional components needed for moving such a large ship. And then if you kind of come slightly further forward, got the, we call it the kind of like the command deck. Um, it's not a bridge, you, know, you can't fly the ship from it, but it's where you operate the tractor beams. It's where it kind of gives you good views out over the front and into space. That's nice. You've got the tractor beam turrets, but also, you know, visually you can kind of stand in this area or sit in this area and look out over the front and over the bow of the ship and kind of really see what you're trying to pull in or what you're trying to capture into your cargo hold. As we come downstairs, we've got a little kind of covered area at the rear of the cargo hold, and that is where you can store a couple of small ground vehicles or some of your equipment for moving vehicles and cargo. That's pretty cool. That's This is what makes it such a great uh, carrier, man. Like you have space for just for, for dedicated for ground vehicles, but you have so much space to put other vehicles and ships. It's so cool. Go around. And then look at, that. Look, at, look at this amount of space, right? You can fit, man, you can fit some fighters in here, man, for sure. So it's not just cargo, but also it could be a carrier. Main cargo nice. hold of the ship. And this takes up the majority of the interior space is this large cargo hold. One of the things that we were kind of really keen to do was give lots of different views and different angles down into this cargo hold. Again, as we're exploring slightly less lawful systems, we wanted to give the players as much opportunities as we can to kind of be safe aboard their own ship. So um, either side of the cargo hold, we've got these uh, gantries that run completely front to rear on the ship, and they give great view down into your cargo bay. They also give that opportunity of if there's someone tries to board you via the cargo bay, it gives you some nice cover opportunities. And we've also got a few little windows that kind of look down into it as well. As you move to the kind of like the very front, the very nose of the ship, those gantries lead into a kind of secure cargo area. It's somewhere that's a little bit more difficult to get to when you kind of enter the ship. The big thing oh, we were referencing shoot. when we were... So they have a separate cargo area where, uh, which is more, which is more secure. So all your high valuable items will be up here as opposed to the rest of the cargo bay. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's somewhere that's a little bit more difficult to get to when you kind of enter the ship. The big thing we were referencing when we were looking at it was this idea of police evidence rooms. And so these kind of individual cages where you could put your most secure cargo, whatever it might be, in this area, and it would make it quite difficult to try and breach in or out of that area. So it gives us just somewhere a little bit more secure for kind of smaller cargo items. Finally, at the very front, we've got access to one of the main turrets and the tractor beam turret. The biggest attraction for me with it is just the versatility of the cargo space. From a good citizen law standpoint, it is a 
cargo ship, but also that retractable roof and the tractor beams on board it give it some less legal opportunities for perhaps taking other people's cargo ships in space and on the ground. At the time of recording, we're also exploring a more military-themed variant of the Ironclad. It doesn't have the name yet, so we'll just call it the Drake. Ironclad Assault. Compared to the base ship, this has been developed to be support sick. ground assault operations. That's going to be pretty sick. So what they're adding is, instead of the, they have more, the primary turrets are all the way in the back, top section of it, but they're going to add two additional ones in the front here, and then two additional ones in the bottom. And these are all like four, four guns per turret. That's pretty, that's pretty sick, actually. It seems like these ones are remote turrets. But man, that's a lot of damage you can you, you can do this, do with this. So this is going to give the um, what's what's the the one that the dropship, uh, the um, is it anvil the anvil dropship? It's gonna give it some some serious competition, man. This I think I will probably go with this because this has way more space. You can have troops in here, you can have vehicles in here, you can also have uh light fighters in here as well you know this is a solid ship and it seems like it has uh more turrets even in the back here then there's one bottom turret right here in the back as well so that's going to be pretty cool to see the, this uh this variant of it it has additional turrets covering the upper and lower surfaces yeah so right here right here right there right there there's another one in the bottom here but it also has some turrets right here these right here so it's going to be heavily armed as well as armored it's it's going to be it's, it's meant to be a tank really the way it's look the way it's designed it's it looks like it's meant to be a tank so it's going to take a lot of damage you know so this is going to be like the perfect vehicle to use to, as a drop ship and um to deliver high value cargo because it, it's going to tank and it's going to and especially with the master mode update, man, you can't get close to this thing if you're, if you're in a light fighter or a, a smaller ship. This thing will shred you apart, no problem. To provide more fire support and the front section of the cargo. And that, and they got, you can get tanks in here, like multiple tanks in here, right? So according to this, based on this image, you can fit, what, three? So one, two, three, at least, Nova tanks. That's impressive. That's impressive. The C2, what does the, T, the C2 carry? What does the C2 carry? The C2 can get, a, I think, two, right? Two Nova tanks in there. But this thing is, seems like it's it's three, right? One, two, three. And you could probably get them side by side, right? So like one, two, three, four on two, on, on two. Like, I think you could get at least four in here. Looking at the size of the cargo bay. That's pretty area awesome. has been redesigned to enable our largest vehicles in game to be deployed from it, such as the tank. In addition, there we go. Let's go. You can fit four Nova tanks. That's that's impressive. That's that's better than the uh, C2 or the A2 variant. So this is going to be a solid vehicle for orcs to own, man. This this is a carrier. It's not just a cargo ship. It's a carrier. It's a multi-role ship. This is nice. I like this. I like this. Go Bay has been reduced in size to facilitate a onboard repair facility. So for those of you who want to onboard repairing, yo, this ship is going to be sick. So this is also going to have a similar feature set as uh, the Odyssey because the Odyssey has onboard repair. So uh, man, I. I said it, man. This year is a year for big ships, especially uh, with Star Citizen Alpha 4.0 coming out. They are going to be focusing on these big ships that help you survive and help you traverse these large systems. Pyro is going to be a large system, and you're going to need these big ships to move you around. You can't be flying around with these small ships. So you're going to need these big vessels. This is why they're working on the Odyssey. The Galaxy is also something else they're going to be working on. Polaris, we know, is going to be coming. Um, this is also on its way, you know. So it, it's man, it's just exciting. I really like this, though. I really do like this. To have a journey in the cargo profession, traditionally you'd start out in something, say, like a, a halle. The next step up from there really is sort of into 
Drake Caterpillar territory. Uh, so you're doing roughly an eight to 10 times jump in cargo capacity. From there, the Ironclad sits nicely between those smaller ships and the much larger bulk carriers such as the Hull C, and then ultimately you get to things like the Hull DE and Kraken at the, the end of the cargo career. You said Kraken. Yes. Is that a hint at anything? It's not a hint at anything. I think increasing that visual library of assets that we can pull from and use um, in a Drake manufacturer at the right scale is super valuable for when we move on to the large ships. I like this concept. This is a nice concept. I think this is going to get a lot of sales for CIG. Honestly, this is going to get a lot of sales for CIG.